car insurance went up so much this year. You have a high safety rating vehicle. I assume it's because it has to do with the fact that insurance is essentially a representation of two things. How likely you are to get into a crash and what's the damage should an accident happen. The problem is because used cars went up, everything on insurance also went up. So I assume your car is particularly expensive now. Wild, huh? Did you move? Insurance company fucked this guy in particular. Yep. Ooh, this is good. New rule from Democratic Governor of Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro. State agencies must issue permits quickly or refund application fees. It's a good start. It's a good start. Department of Environmental Protection, which decides when developers can break ground, has reduced its backlog for new permits by 41%. It's a good start. For those that haven't heard, there's a whole bunch of news now about some of the companies that were moving into um, Arizona to support TSMC and Intel's uh, fab expansions and fab plans are pushing back their own expansion plans because it has taken way too long for them to A, get money from Chips Act. They were also promised money. B, dealing with construction, unions, and permitting because a lot of these are chemical companies. All right, part of the issue we have to deal with in America is if anything the CHIPS Act needs to be teaching us, it is taking way too long to build things. America, does it should not take two years just to basically start construction on large projects. We need to move faster. We need to not destroy the environment. I get that. But the fact that there's so much involvement, ridiculous. Japan's beaten us to the punch. All right. China would finish in two weeks, right? These are what Blackwell looks like. Figano, what stops you from lying and getting cheaper insurance? I'm pretty sure when you do your registration each year, um, sometimes those, some states, they, they'll know how many miles you declare. I missed Xiaomi reporting uh, earnings. Mm. 
<laughs> yeah, reminder, if you lie, technically it's called insurance fraud. Not even technically. It's just called insurance fraud. What is going on with Goldman Sachs um, back share offerings? They crushed Silicon Valley Bank and now they fumbled hard with SMCI. I mean, to be fair, promo, why aren't you to talk about the original um, Goldman Sachs uh, share offering that did damage? Didn't their share offering, what was it? Discover or Discovery Networks? Was that the one that crushed, um, what's it called? Archegos? That was well <laughs> hold on <laughs> that was good business of them getting out from it but they also caused it because it was them launching a share offering that crushed one of the companies archegos was in and then the separate side of of this was proof by the way promo that there was a the quote chinese wall chinese wall is an actual term used in governance and finance where two parts of an organization are truly independent. They don't share information. So in this case, the investment banking side of Goldman Sachs, working with a client to issue more shares and prime brokerage services, working with the client, in this case, Archegos, to own shares of a company that had Goldman Sachs um, as an advisor. Goldman Sachs basically issued, got the company to issue shares, which then crushed their client and then all of a sudden Goldman Sachs took on all that risk. Then they sold out as quick as possible. Be right back. I think my food's done. Uh, hey, deeper can value. They don't use the term Chinese wall anymore. Okay, I was wondering about that. Seems like they would change that. From a, you hate the you do hate the claim that bankers uh, that banks lower price targets um, so they can buy shares cheaper. I've also always hated that because a bank who is consistently doing that usually charges for their research. No one would pay money for their research if they're frequently wrong. Credit Suisse has been trying to kill Credit Suisse for years. <laughs> Bankers do have a pretty good sense of humor, I will say. 
Isn't that right, Mo? All right. Let me put on a video while I eat. Have my Celsius. $68. NVIDIA also pulling back just a bit as investors digest that news out of the company's developer conference. Shares is sitting around $868. And of course, they've got that new AI chip. I mean, I guess let's just kick this off with maybe even just your initial reaction to everything we've heard so far. Jim, I'll start with you. Um, are you surprised that we're seeing a little bit of pullback on this news? Was it not as I don't know, as bang up as the market had hoped to hear? Um, I don't think that's what it is at all. Okay. I think it's just, you know, it's had a hell of a rally, up 75-odd percent year to date, and, you know, something like 3x over the last 12 months. So a little bit of profit taking is warranted. Uh, you know, going into this sort of event, you think to yourself, well, what sort of rabbit can they pull out of a hat? And I, I'm not expecting them to come up with a cure for cancer on that sort of uh, conference that they do. They did what they are supposed to do. They came up with the next chip that they're going to design, the B200, the Blackwell, updates to the operation operating system that will keep them on the leading edge of AI technology as far as semiconductors go. They did everything they're supposed to do. Um, as far as it pulling back today, that's that's kind of noise to me. Uh, stock trades somewhere around 35 times forward earnings. Uh, I'm looking at FactSet right now, which thinks that long-term earnings growth is 30 percent, gives you a peg ratio of about 1.2. That's absolutely fine. So to summarize, I mean, there's nothing fatal that came out of yesterday. Some people may think that at 35 times, it's too expensive. And you know what? But Courtney, at some point, it will be too expensive. <laughs> at some point, that 30% growth rate will fall off. There will be the double and triple ordering that catches up on client inventories, and then they miss demand or something like that. But that's several quarters away. That's not something to worry about today. This is just a healthy profit-taking pullback. Okay. Shannon, what do you make? What was your reaction from what we heard and what we heard from, from Jensen Wong this morning? I wouldn't necessarily disagree with Jim on this. I think, you know, if you look at NVIDIA, it, can, it remains sort of the easy button in terms of sure. uh, gaining access to the AI trade. And um, although there will clearly be competition, and if we think about um, the pers the perspective that inference will become increasingly more important and there's obviously going to be uh, in our view at least more competition there than what Nvidia has in terms in terms of um, the learning chips I think one of the things you want to really think about is are there opportunities to garner this exposure outside of Nvidia and the semis in particular mm -hmm. or even you know sort of the the Microsoft and alphabet obviously we had some good news good news on Gemini earlier <laughs> th earlier this week as well so I think one of the things is really looking at to Jim's point the valuation right now appears justified at, given the uh, the head start, if you will, in terms of what NVIDIA has. But this next leg of the AI trade, it won't be quite as easy to determine who the, the bigger winners and, and potentially some of the losers will be. And so I think that you're not probably going to get that dispersion or differentiation, though, till later in the year. So for right now, I think this is just a little bit of near-term profit-taking. But looking ahead, I think, is going to be necessary to capture this next wave of the trade. Josh, it seems like a lot of the analysts, obviously, pretty bullish. Your Goldman Sachs raising its target to 1,000 from 875. We're sitting right about, I think, 868 right now. Susquehanna going to 1,050 from 850. Does that feel appropriate for you today, even though we're having a little bit of a pullback on the news? Hey, Courtney. I, I, I kind of feel bad for people who have just learned this story in the last year, as so many <laughs> investors have. It's, it's interesting. You hear people walking around talking about Blackwell chips and stuff who, like, a year ago, you couldn't, couldn't understand the difference between linear computing versus nonlinear uh, or, or why GPUs, which historically were developed for video games, had anything to do with um, uh, AI, et cetera. So now everyone's an expert. And that, that's where we have an issue. Uh, I'm, I'm long NVIDIA. I've been long for a very long time. I'm still bullish on the future. But I think the issue that we now have is there's, there's this mass acceptance that they are the platform, 80% market share, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Everybody gets that. Who are the new buyers? Uh, or is there enough firepower coming in to add another trillion dollars to the market cap here? Because if there isn't, you're talking about price targets of 1,000, 1,050. I want everyone to, to do this mental exercise with me. On a $950 stock, if it goes to 1050, is anybody throwing a parade? 
What I like to do with these, with these uh, triple digit and quadruple digit stocks is I like to reduce it by, uh, by, by one point and say, this is like a $90 stock going to 100, like big deal. So mm -hmm. I think it's gonna be really tough for the pace of gains to continue here. I do feel really bad for people who got really excited about it in the last few months. Because um, I don't know how much is left. This is a company that is pulling forward probably three to five years worth of demand into a single 12 to 18 month time period. They are actively telling governments and Fortune 500 companies, say yes today or get to the back of the line. Yeah. And guess what CTOs are telling their CEOs? We got to say yes. If we end up on the back of the line, our shareholders are going to think we're schmucks. In that environment, it's not that NVIDIA doesn't have opportunity going forward, it's that they are swallowing so many gulps of that opportunity that it's tough to say this is a stock going from $900 to $1,800. And the last thing I want to say on this topic, it really does remind me of Qualcomm in, uh, the, in 1999. I think the stock split twice in one calendar year, which is really weird and really insane. And it's not that the bulls were wrong about Qualcomm's opportunity in wireless. It's that they priced it all in a decade's worth inside of a year. Uh, so so it, you have to separate. Is the technology amazing? Of course it is. Is the stock price discounting a lot of how amazing it is? Yes, of course it is. Hmm. Very interesting take. Let's actually get um, some sound from Jensen Wong. He, of course, is the CEO of NVIDIA and spoke with our Jim Cramer earlier today. And he says, look, we are more than just a chip company. Take a listen. If you look at the things that we do, uh, we build the chips, the systems, the networking, and so on and so forth, the entire, the entire data center practically, all the software that goes into it. And then we sell it in parts. The reason why we sell, and that is what confuses people. They think that NVIDIA is a chip company because we sell everything in parts. Right. The reason we do that is so that our customers could integrate NVIDIA's technology into their data centers however they like. Jim, I'm going to get your reaction to that. Do you feel like that is part of why NVIDIA has this edge? Well, I, yes, but I, I think actually some of the things that Josh said are, are spot on. Okay. Um, which is to say that this is not a train that will run to get run forever. Uh, the Qualcomm analogy just, you know, up 20-fold in a year and a half at the end of the last millennium. At some point, NVIDIA will face the same issues that Qualcomm faced that any company that catches lightning in a bottle faces, hmm. which is to say it has the edge right now. Um, Josh's comments about, you know, CTO saying we got to buy this now, that's not only what they're doing. They're saying we've got to put in three times as many orders as we think we need because we're going to get one quarter of what we put in. And eventually that will back up and that will bite, you know, in terms of inventories. That's what's more relevant to me. Um, I don't think, by the way, that that's anytime soon. So when we talk about anything that's leading edge for NVIDIA right now, this train can run for a little bit further. I don't think it's going to double over the next 12 months, but I think the thing is you have to be prepared, folks, for that quarter that will come, probably three quarters from now, maybe four quarters from now, where NVIDIA says, hey, you know what? Demand came in softer than we expected, and it's because inventories have piled up at customers. That will happen. So let me just summarize this again. And, you know, as much as we want to talk about how cutting edge NVIDIA is, it will be found to be a cyclical semiconductor at some point in time. Not today. That is really interesting. Hey, one, one more thing on this. Yeah. What, what, I'm sorry. It, it should be pointed out, this is a $40,000 chip. How many <laughs> buyers are there? So we know Microsoft's really excited to buy as many as they can, and they could afford it. We know Alphabet's pretty excited. Probably a pretty good bet Meta is really excited. And then Amazon. And, you know, look around. Like, it's not as though there are millions of potential customers here. There are end customers mm -hmm. of those platforms that will benefit from how many GPUs are installed. But this is not the, quite the same as estimating, okay, the handset market. Two billion people mm -hmm. are, are going to need a handset phone. So, look, nobody would say NVIDIA is not in the best possible position of any tech company for the next five years. Like, no one would argue, okay, great, then what? <laughs> yep. 
by the way, I 110% actually agree with everything Jim Leventhal said. Right? It's just the sheer idea that the complaint about NVIDIA is we know they're pulling forward demand. Correct. Correct. The problem is, what's the appropriate amount of future demand we should be pricing in, right? Also, what people don't appreciate is that there is an argument that NVIDIA can become less cyclical. Less. And potentially, can they buck full cyclicality? The answer might lie with Broadcom. The answer is essentially, for NVIDIA to make sense from a valuation standpoint, they have to eventually switch from moving just hardware into software. All right, into something that has, you know, annual recurring revenue. That's that's the important component for a company like NVIDIA. And even right now, even if they manage to sell, if they double or triple their software run rate, I think if they triple their software run, aren't they like $8 billion now annualized? Which means, okay, you triple it, $24 billion. They're near $100 billion in revenue right now. That would not still be enough to make any sense from a valuation standpoint. They'd have to go bigger. But that's the argument. And that's why I said, like, like basically to me, the NVIDIA party probably lasts a few more quarters. Because we've heard so much from the supply chain, so much from the server makers, so much from the mega caps. Demand is still there. The interesting thing is, is that Jim Liebenthal made the comment like, well, one of these times you're going to have a quarter in which NVIDIA is going to say, well, demand's kind of not there. Demand slowed down. My argument is NVIDIA stock will be dropping before they ever hit that announcement. At some point, NVIDIA will have a beat and guide up. And after that day, the stock will start selling off. So, yeah. <laughs> Blue's Clues, is NVIDIA doing acquisitions? Yes. Yes. I have experienced this first day with TSMC. Actually, it was Qualcomm that really taught me that lesson. <laughs> right? But I also saw it happen, by the way, to NVIDIA, and I also saw it happen to, uh, to Micron. Like, there will be a day coming up in which after NVIDIA's earnings, you'll see the stock go down. Not for one day, all right, more consistently go down. And that's why, to me, if you're playing NVIDIA, you need to listen to every earnings call from mega caps. All right, the second, the second you start hearing the mega caps talking about cutting CapEx, get the fuck out of NVIDIA. They are telling you at that point, they will be screaming. So yeah. Uh, when do you see a lot of concentration risk to NVIDIA's business? Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. NVIDIA basically right now has something like 10 customers that can probably comprise like 80% of their, or 70% of their revenue. Well, the reason I didn't say 80% was it occurred to me they have a gaming segment. They do have a concentration risk. The good news is, is that you know the biggest, the biggest company, their biggest customers are all in very good financial situation because they're mega caps, right? So you're really waiting for them to start saying like, oh, no. The second you hear Microsoft in particular talk about cutting back on CapEx, get the fuck out of NVIDIA. Do I ever see a time where NVIDIA takes chips fabs in-house? No, no, absolutely not, no. You will see Intel sell fabs before you see NVIDIA buy fabs. Like, uh-uh. NVIDIA only got to succeed because they never manufactured a single chip. Uh, NVIDIA moving into fabs would kill their margin? Absolutely. I mean, basically, they'd have to spend roughly $20 billion to $25 billion a year every two years 
to build out fabs and equip them. And that's just for the chance to make their own chips. Then you have to combine the fact that actually manufacturing chips is one of the most difficult manufacturing process on the planet. There's no guarantee it works. Wendy's 100% correct. If you ever see NVIDIA drop on a Microsoft, Meta, or Amazon earnings, it's not BS, get out. I'll go one step further, fucking short them. I will short the downside on semis this cycle. I promise you. Like, I'm looking forward to playing the downside on this semiconductor cycle. I don't think we're there yet. Why are we not talking about TSMC? Patience. A lot of Wall Street bets is in TSMC, which does absolutely terrify me. TSMC is fantastic. They're going to do very well this year. Very, very well this year. I'm extremely bullish on the company. The thing that I don't think people appreciate right now, everyone knows semiconductors are cyclical. They don't realize is right now, semiconductors are defined by their end markets. Most of the semiconductor end markets are closer to their bottom than their top. Most are. So people who keep saying like, oh, well now, you know, like basically it'll be interesting to see. My expectation is there will eventually turn into a time period in which NVIDIA is going down, but the bulk of other semiconductor stocks are going to go up. It's going to be curious to see if that holds true. That differentiation could get wild. with any constant on this many people believe the july and september meetings are dead meetings because of the election perhaps a question for tomorrow i think it's nonsense and the fed will act if need be i would agree i would agree i think people play into the fact there's an election cycle as though the fed's not going to want to get political the fed's mandates haven't changed and if you've listened to jerome powell speak he has referred to his mandates as legal mandates right Hey, r and Trades, thank you for the raid. How you folks doing? Hope all is well. I appreciate it. Might be time to go long international paper. Hmm. Yes, r and Trades, your, trade, your raid went through. Got two of you, I guess. So by all means, welcome to the party. But it went through. Or he is a crowd, a good type of crowd. <laughs> Jared Kushner under fire for calling Gaza warfront property waterfront property valuable. There is no self realization. No self-realization. You can't do that. You just, you, you shouldn't get caught doing that. Just saying. You can think of that. You can in your mind be like, wow, it's beautiful beachside property. You know, just don't get fucking caught saying it.
Hey, all you energy bulls. While investors trip of themselves to get into NVIDIA, Sam Altman makes a fascinating point. Energy is the hardest part. Now think about how the market values AI darlings versus energy companies. Am I the only one that smells opportunity? Counterpoint to this gentleman is, how many energy companies are there? How many AI companies are there? Hmm? Yeah. That's the thing, like, if one one chip company basically sells like 80% of training infrastructure right now, NVIDIA. The biggest oil company on the planet sells how much of the energy consumption? How much of just the oil consumption, plastics consumption, right? I assume we're talking Saudi Aramco. And I assume their total global market share is what? 5%? Yeah. Yeah, that's why valuations are where they are. By the way, I would be insanely bullish, especially after last night. Um, I would be insanely bullish specifically on like nuclear power or a lot of energy infrastructure. Like, I think America needs to get a lot smarter about our energy policy. You guys have heard me bitching for years now about how I want to see the U.S. government invest serious money to upgrade our electrical grid. I mean it. So we break up the AI monopoly like they did energy in the past? No. No. Mainly because there's a difference between a technological monopoly versus kind of a regulatory monopoly, right? And Tinch Time's correct. By the time they actually got through hearings to actually break up NVIDIA, it'd be five years from now. You saw Altman was on my favorite podcast. He talked about Lex Friedman. Wait until someone discovers a new advanced chip mine. <laughs> Your time. Social media is a good example of that to you. Cat got out of the bag and then Congress tries to put it back. They just can't get on any agreement or anything. I don't disagree at all, actually. It's funny to me watching Congress try to make all these decisions about like, how do we regulate AI? And I think, first of all, I think regulating AI, it's cute. So much less important than quite frankly, getting regulation on social media correct. Social media is a Bit much bigger problem than AI will be. Social media has been very important, but very impactful. And there's a lot of areas in which there's been a lot of uh, negative, shall we say, societal externalities. Externalities, by the way, is a term, fancy term used by economists to describe impacts that weren't adequately priced, right? So like I sell you a barrel of oil I pumped out, right? You're paying for the oil, but no one's paying for the pollution, which society bit, uh, essentially absorbs, right? Yeah. You love you some externalities. Giggity. But yeah. I mean, you're, you're going to laugh. Like my biggest issue with social media is the fact that people get paid on it. Like, I get it. First Amendment, right? I know. And I, I do this myself, by the way. I'm, I'm paid for the words I said, right? But if I sit there and tell you, like, um, there's, you know, such and such, you know, Joe Biden is secretly trying to eat children, something like that, Right? I can get money for outrage. It's not true. And it can drive people to do bad shit. Essentially the Alex Jones example, right? Which wasn't exactly social media. He was actually running, well, he was one on YouTube, but he was also originally on like AM radio, right?
What's this one? Adopt decision on California's water service. Infrastructure improvement plan. Hm. Yep. Yeah, my issue is, like, famously for, like, Alex Jones as an example, he lied. He knowingly lied. He made money on those lies, and there was a very negative... Basically, if I sell you an energy drink, which poisons you, all right? I'm not talking about going to jail. I'm talking about civil product liability case goes against me. I lose pretty easily. But if I say something that's not true and causes damage... I get to hide behind the First Amendment. No, it's bullshit. That's why. Sandy Hook denial was a big no-no. I We had a family friend whose child was killed, by the way. Not a crisis actor. Not a crisis actor. Okay? Fucking scenario is horrifying. Okay? Alex Jones made a lot of money peddling that shit. He made a ton of money ton of advertising money because eyeballs wanted to hear oh the government just made this shit up because they're coming after your guns by the way did not take a single fucking gun afterward no not a single gun yeah america were like yeah we're cool with five-year-olds getting shot i've always said and i'm pro second amendment i'm pro gun all right but i acknowledge at least i am honest about this because of our constitution certain number of people each year innocent people are gonna fucking die and we, as a country, have decided we're okay with that. Yeah, that's how it is. That's how it is. Daddy Long calls. No, I did not write a, U a uh, DD on that AMD. Play the gay frogs. No, no, I don't know. If you guys don't know who Adam uh, Alex Jones is because you're, say, not American, it's hilarious. He's done, first of all, he got his start arguing that 9-11 was an inside job. And he went crazy with it. He went nuts. But that's how he got known. And that's my number one argument, by the way, as to why you know the U.S. government is not some super competent, super evil organization. Because there was a, a little documentary created called Loose Change. And the people behind that documentary are still alive. They allege the government murdered thousands of Americans. The government that's willing to and capable of murdering thousands of Americans isn't going to let your dipshit ass live. <laughs> no, they're going to murk the fuck out of you. Right? So that's how you know. That's how you know. Our government's not nearly good enough to pull this shit off. Right? That's like people saying like, oh, did you hear... Boeing killed a uh, killed a whistleblower. No, they didn't, because the whistleblower is dead. Boeing would have never succeeded. A, one of you pointed out the other day they would have subcontracted to like five different companies, right? And second of all, no Boeing executive. They're rich. They're not going to jail over Boeing. If Boeing did do it, I would buy the shit out of their stock. They got that dog in them. They got that dog in them. Wendy, someone definitely killed him. I'll give you a hint. I think it's him. Could you imagine, though, if it was like Airbus? If I found out Airbus was doing it, like they put out a hit to make Boeing look bad, I'm buying Airbus. Again, they got that dog in them. The tender cheese. Is Boeing a good buy here? Actually, it might be. United Airlines put out an email or a message to all their customers, and it kind of came across like they were taking some blame for some recent incidents. Mm-hmm. Podcast, getting influenced by my Georgia friends. Got that dog in them. Yeah. I mean, if an executive is willing to murk people Right? Because they're already rich. I assume executives don't give a shit nearly enough. All right? Not for a publicly traded company. A private company? Different ballgame. All right? If you're the founder and CEO of a company, you're not rich. You gave your lifeblood for it. And some shit-talking journalist or whistleblower is getting in your way and you mark them? That's different. You had an incentive. 
you're a multi-millionaire Boeing director, right? You're not killing someone. No. You're with Wendy. Someone killed that dude. I think the dude killed himself. And I'm willing to bet that he went overboard to say, it's not a suicide, just as a final fuck you to Boeing. He didn't like Boeing. But his allegations were not that big a deal. He's like, oh no, they subcontracted out safety. Oh no shit, huh? They use substandard uh, uh, materials. Oh. Like he didn't even say anything that bad to Boeing. Keep in mind, the word that bad with Boeing means something. This company's killed a lot of people on accident. This shit happens way too often. Name a Fortune 500 company in the last 20 years. Notice that caveat, last 20 years. Because if we went back further, we could talk about United Fruit and South America all the time. I do think Epstein killed himself. I think he was, he absolutely did it for others and others knew it. It was a gentleman's game, right? It was a gentleman's game. Right? What? The guy facing life in jail for fucking kids? No, he had everything to live for. You're right. The knowledge that had he went to jail, the fact that he could speak, anyone that he was close with would probably get killed by the rich people he set up. The only way out was him killing himself. I just, I do agree with the conspiracy theories that someone turned off the camera or oopsies happened. But yeah, Epstein absolutely fucking killed himself. It wouldn't have required someone coming in and killing him. He was going to do it himself. Yes. That was not a guy who had a lot of reason to live. All right. No, he was accused of being a national pedophile. He was going to jail forever. Forever and ever and ever. Yeah. Enzo's correct, by the way. He also had tried to kill himself before. I think he was given a lot of comfort. He knew. Yeah. He could either die softly at his own hands, or as Mo says, he'd have been beaten to death by someone else or spend the rest of his life basically in solitary, right? <clears throat> Podcast. When you get into conspiracies, as you get into conspiracies, wasn't there a, a medical examiner report that some injuries were concurrent with murder and not self-inflicted? I have not heard that. Yeah, Chad, that's the, that's the conspiracy I'm on board with, which is a lot of other shit. A lot of other shit happened around, okay? I have no doubt Epstein was blackmailing rich and powerful people throughout the world. They wanted him dead. Epstein knew he was never getting out of jail. Never getting out of jail. He was going to have a terrible existence. He wanted to die. Right? There's like a lot of area in between. I don't think it requires someone to come in and murder Epstein. I think Epstein was happy murdering himself for it, right? Anyway. Yeah, Lonnie, you think it's a bit naive to think that doesn't happen? What? Uh, yeah. I mean, the naive part is thinking that Epstein wasn't prepared to kill himself. That's my argument. The idea that Epstein had a bunch to, what, you think he was going to get witness protection if he was blackmailing rich and powerful people? Like that was going to be an option? No. The truly naive outlook to me is the idea that someone came in and murdered him. That's the most naive. I think the real level of cynical asshole is he wanted to kill himself. Other people wanted him to kill himself. Other people may have communicated to him, if you don't kill yourself, we will find everyone you care about outside of jail and murder sh shit out of them. All right. Basically, he was guided to the cliff where he could jump off. He was told if he didn't jump off the cliff, what would happen and how it would be bad. He was reminded that if he didn't jump off the cliff and he tried to exist in a normal life, he was in jail for the rest of his life, watching out for every person who wants to beat the shit out of them. And maybe they reminded him what happened to, um, what's his face? Jeffrey Dahmer, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Spy fucking. Spy fucking. <laughs> Chad, you think we're arguing our semantic, but it's an important semantic. It's an important one because too often people make it seem like, right? Jeffrey Epstein had things to live for, but damn it, they murdered him. No, they didn't murder him. No. Killed himself. But everyone was in agreement. Everyone was in agreement. Boy, it'd be really cool if Epstein could never speak to anyone, right? Yeah. Talk about the judge? Why? Funny. <laughs> Hard to disagree. That's why I really, yep. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, the Jessane part is the other interesting aspect, which is what did she, like, welcome, she's still alive, right? So would it be better if someone had a hand in this Boeing guy suiciding, even if it wasn't directly murder? I mean, it depends on from, or is it from an investment standpoint or just an overall conspiracy standpoint? For a conspiracy standpoint, I'm sorry, I don't think. It doesn't pass the logic test. A guy who used to work for them, who retired in 2017, that's important. And you can look, by the way, all of the, the shit he has alleged is up. And you can look at it and say, why would Boeing assassinate? Why would Boeing kill someone? Basically, why would a Fortune 500 company executive who already makes so much money, right? You could take Boeing to zero. They still have money. They're still rich. Right? They don't care. They don't care nearly enough. That's why it's fun to talk shit about. Totally fun to talk shit about. Right? Yeah. God damn. Spy's happy. Spy is very happy to see you all. Now, by the way, reminder, guys, after the stream, I will be streaming again. Hearthstone, new expansion today. New expansion, and I'm really excited. I'm very happy. Uh, promo, didn't he already testify and put the info out? Correct. And all of his recollections, again, all of his recollections were from 2017. It was all out. It's not like he just discovered something new, right? Bed meeting got leaked. Someone had footage of the dry cleaner. They saw the purple tie. I love it. I love it. Can you wear a green short so that we can watch Hearthstone through your booty? Callie Otter, why are you like this? Why? Why are you like this? Let me get on the Twitch meta, yeah. Hearthstone scented anal glands. <laughs> I'm sitting on a literal gold. <laughs> Spy, the rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated. Yep. Um, shortly after. Maybe not immediately after. Yeah, it'll be toy time. I'm excited. By the way, do earnings even matter? I know Micron's earnings are tomorrow, and that one I obviously give a shit about because that's the comp that's one of my one of my favorite companies in the last year. The 
Did Timura say anything important? Cleveland-led researchers announced the FOMC's most recent economic projections. All right. Brings core PCE inflation to 2.75 by 2025. This is from February. Yeah, this is from February. Yeah. February 2023, right? And the funny thing is, is this model project, uh, projects the FOMC's unemployment rate brings core PCE inflation to 2.75 by 2025. Core PCE inflation right now is what? 2.8? So it shows you how fast it happened, right? That's why a lot of their expectations are quite wrong. But it's interesting to see, you're right. If anything, I would use that as proof that even the Fed's original projections were wrong. Inflation came down faster than they were expecting. I wanna see Uber, did Uber say something today? Because this morning they did pretty erect shit. Ignore that spike. Earnings this week. I saw Josh Brown's commentary about them being a mega king, which is wild. All right, no one matters tonight. I don't give a shit about these companies. Tomorrow morning, by the way, uh, PDD, Pinduo, BioNTech. Right? I, I saw Uber and Lyft leaving Minneapolis. General Mills. BioNTech, I, I really like. I really like BioNTech. I don't know if this is the right earnings for them. This is not a vaccine company. I want to make sure everyone understands that. If you are buying this company, you are not buying on COVID. You are not buying on COVID vaccines. This is a really good company in the future um, that has a really interesting pipeline. At some point they start going up, I'm buying. Calling out Uber as a future uh, mega cap though, like I don't hate it nearly as much as you would suspect, given how much I used to shit on Uber. My belief is, and I mentioned this last night to someone, my belief is Uber is the last one standing of the <laughs> driver as a service, covering things from DoorDash, Grubhub, Instacart, Lyft. I think Uber is the one that's the last one standing. Uber got nothing on self-driving. Uber is more than self-driving. Uber is going to be about the person in the car who can do things like the shopping, the actual like picking up food, delivering, right? The second they get truly replaced, different ball game completely. Time. Well played, well played, well played. Bulls win. Bulls win. Yeah, Uber sold their self-driving uh, vehicle unit. No interest. Yeah, they'll... Points have been distributed. The points are out. Broadcom, Micron, NVIDIA, all ended green. How did TSMC do? No. Nope. Not green. TSMC such a bitch. Yep. Um, 17 million in volume. Their volume's been higher recently, which I blame absolutely on Wall Street bets, by the way. But believe it or not, last 10 days, average volume on TSMC was 24 million. Today it's 17. Jankwalk, uh, you think it's funny that Uber is becoming a concierge service? Yeah. What's old is new again, right? Mm. 
wait till we get any of the um the chip makers or anybody that talks positively about PCs. I think that's going to be the interesting thing. Like round two for semiconductors, it's probably not AI. It's probably PCs, mobiles. Well, you can keep saying that. Look at Rocket's clothes. Isn't Rocket purely a play on, ooh, nice. Isn't Rocket purely a play on interest rate expectations? Let's buy Logitech and Corsair. Oh, God. Corsair is such a shit guy. Logitech's weird. Gotta love seeing the headline. Micron technology, second quarter revenue expected to surge. Um, any Intel news? Let me see. Not seeing something specific. Intel's close to a buy. I'd wait for Jesse to say it, but he's probably going to call out at some point this goes up. By the way, with Micron reporting tomorrow, if Micron speaks positively about PCs, that's probably a good sign for Intel. Intel's still number one in PCs easily. In fact, my argument is, is that if you're playing Intel, you're essentially playing the PC cycle. I think Intel is close to a buy. Intel is close to a buy. Intel's bidding in the after hours. Uh, yeah. Uh, with some volume too. Is there any announcement? Yeah, Wendy called out Intel back at twenty five. Intel, uh, Wendy was calling it out, and Wendy was right. Wendy was right. His argument was Jesus Christ, Intel's being priced for failure. Biden expected to announce grant for Intel to expand chip production. Cool. Just Intel? Right? Are people realizing that if that happens for Intel, it probably happens for other companies? Hmm. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. Who we raiding today? We are raiding people. All right. I will be streaming pretty soon again. Right? This time I am streaming Hearthstone. So I want to send you guys off to someone else who covers the market. Right? But I'll be streaming again later. Let's see R&R &R trades. He was nice enough. Well, and this guy was nice enough to see how good he is. But thank you guys very much for tuning in. I don't know where Rebels are now. See you guys.